Energy's back, foggy thinking's gone. I feel much, much younger. Mm-hmm. And my libido. Yeah. I, I didn't think there was that big of a problem with it, but That's you amazing. are looking pretty good. <laughs> if your continuing search for answers has led you nowhere, you will find the truth here on the Forbidden Doctor Podcast. Seek the truth with your hosts, Dr. Jack and Mary Stockwell. Hey, everybody, it's Dr. Jack. And Mary. And we have for you podcast episode 108. Ooh. Root canals, are they killing you? Part two. Yeah, and hopefully you listened last week because if you didn't hear last week's, this won't make as much sense to you. So you need to go listen to podcast number 107. Yeah, if you're just coming in for the first time, listen to one, you need to hear 107, as Mary says here. Yeah. And we need to make a little disclaimer, too, about the way you're talking. Ah, yeah, I still have these little inserts in because I had root canals removed, and that's why we are doing this podcast. And toxic root canals, I should say, not just any old root canal, ones that were sick. And And they made you like a denture plate. Because as we explained in the last podcast, you had your front tooth removed. Oh, boy. (laughs) <laughs> oh boy well we had a daughter who's been living in hawaii for a while and they came through here the other day on their way to washington because they're moving to washington dc and i showed it to her and she goes oh she put her hand <laughs> she put her hands over yeah, her that's eyes kind of what i've been doing too our you know? own daughter yeah. she goes Ew. <laughs> yeah, i've got a big old hole in the front of my teeth <laughs> Yeah, it's but pretty- we explain that in uh, part one why I went ahead instead of one I pulled out all I didn't pull out the dentist pulled out all six toxic sick root canals and Just we showed like some that. videos right we showed some videos in the first podcast showing how bad they really are and boy have we got some lined up for you oh, here. Oh, this is going to be exciting. And this is because we're the only mammals that mummify mummify an organ and put it back into the body as Dr. Wall says. Which we talked about last time. So yeah. And so this is this is my understanding of this with root canals is we we kill the tooth by pulling out the root because in the root there is the nerve and the blood supply. You cut off the nerve and the blood supply, the tooth dies. Then we stuff it with medicine. In other words, we mummify it, (laughs) trying to kill the bacteria with what seems to be a terribly inefficient amount to do the job. Because in this video, we're going to show you the things that were done to sterilize and cleanse the wound far beyond just sticking some medicine down a root canal, hoping that that will kill the bugs. Then we seal it over with a crown that prevents oxygen from getting in that allows the uh, perfect low oxygen environment to grow the very dangerous anaerobic bacteria. And with the nerve gone, this is this is the whole crux of the thing. You can't feel what's happening thereafter as the slow rot and the putrefaction at the root begins that eventually can cause osteomyelitis, osteonecrosis. That oste- is like rotting of your bones. Oh, yeah. Osteo. You know, osteoporosis yeah. well, you hear there, about. You know, there are there are all the time root canals that go bad. And you go back to the endodontist and he tries to do another one for you. Mm-hmm. There's a reason why it's going bad. <laughs> Their root is rotting. Yes, the root's the rotting bones, away. The bones. It's a slow drip, drip, drip of poisonous, yeah. toxic material into your bloodstream. Yes. Leading to a whole panorama of symptoms. I mean, diseases that can lead to even early death. Yeah, we'll show you here in a few moments. And this is part two of what I think is one of the most provocative, controversial podcasts we have ever done. And if you have had a root canal, you might want to have a very serious discussion with your dentist. Or if you don't have one, a biological dentist, preferably in the very near future. Okay, time for our forbidden secrets that I want you to know. These are the secret things they keep from you, the (laughs) dumb things they tell you, and the really important things they know nothing about. One of our favorite patients, Chris Collins, um, sent us this, and it's this is an article entitled Red Meat Halves, Halves the Risk of Depression. 
Experts admitted surprise at these findings because so many other studies have linked red meat to physical health risks. But this study is saying that it cuts your depression in half if you eat red meat. It goes on to say in the article, we had originally thought that red meat might not be good for mental health, but it turns out that it's actually maybe quite important. Mm-hmm. Big surprise. <laughs> Doesn't that meat look wonderful, that tenderloin? Oh, my goodness. It's making my mouth water. That's really nice. And that goes on to say in this article, they were twice as likely to have a diagnosed depressive or anxiety disorder as those consuming the recommended amount. Yeah, people who weren't getting it. Yeah. Um, now, one thing... That weren't red, eating red yeah, meat. Yeah, that weren't eating red meat. One of the bad things about red meat that's in the press all the time is its connection to cancer and things like this. I have searched and searched, studied and studied. I have never seen one study that compares commercially raised meats to grass-fed meats. Yeah. And that makes all the difference in the you world. You know, I was just reading, listening to a, a Dr. McBride, who is over all the gaps, um, wave on this whole world. Mm-hmm. And um, she wrote the book, you know, Gut and Psychology Syndrome. And she was talking about grass-fed meat. And she said, you have to be so careful. The meat will say it's grass-fed. And what they do is they keep these cows in the barn. They go out and grow grass and they throw pesticides, the glyphosates, the Roundup Ready. They throw all of this on here. And then they bring the grass yeah. in and feed it to these cows who've never been out in the sun Oh, vitamin D. Because they don't want to hurt them and do all these things. My grandpa used to be a rancher, and my brothers would all go help him every winter, herd the the cows down to the um, the pasture down in Perwin where he lived, and then he would then in the spring he would one or the other, and then in the spring, yes, he'd bring them back up to the mountains to the grass pastured area. Grass pastured. Yeah. You know how hard that is. Oh yeah. You know. That's pretty hard. So it's much easier to keep them in these barns where they don't get any vitamin D and they eat these. And then she talks about glyphosates and how it is causing this this rampage of, maybe that's not the right word, of Lyme disease. She says, nobody ever got, we all got bit by ticks growing up. She yep. grew up in Russia. She says, we'd, we'd go out and play in the forest and then we would go in and everybody would pick the ticks off. She goes, I got bit all the time. I didn't get Lyme's disease. And now, you know, we get Lyme's disease and we haven't ever even been in a forest. We've yes. never left the concrete oh, yeah. of the city. No rec- no memory memory of a bite, red spot, elevated area. And it's because of the glyphosates yeah. in, the, in the pesticides. Glyphosate poisoning mimics Lyme's disease. Yes, and she says your body pulls all these different E. coli, candida, um, all these really powerful bacteria to help fight this and and balance it out. And what do we do? Oh, we go slam oh, yeah, our bodies with oh, yeah. antibiotics yep. and just wipe out everything. It's crazy amazing making and that's why we have this weekly feature. I mean the 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 dumb things they tell you and the really important things they know nothing about, which is eating red meat, good red meat, and you know, not destroying your yeah, gut with you antibiotics. Can, you can get that from, you know, if you're in a store that has organic red meat available or grass-fed meats, you talk to them and find out what kind of conditions those animals yeah, are Yeah, it's really under. tough. Dr. McBride says, you know, you shouldn't buy anything in a store. I mean, she's really, you know, purist. <laughs> but, you know, we all can't do that. So you try to do the very, very best you can. Yeah. So there you go. And Chris Collins, <laughs> he sent us, when he sent us his article, he said, This is why I will never date vegans. They are bat guano crazy. <laughs> <laughs> He's funny. I really- well, you, there's no, you can some essential nutrients for the brain you're not going to get if there's not some animal products in your diet. Yeah. And just all there, that is just yeah, all there is you know, to it. And the best things to eat of the animal are the organ meats, which we won't eat at all. So that's why you take our Long Life Energy Enzymes mm. or other products from Standard Process that have the organ meats in so you don't have to gnaw on, you know, a Remember. hypothalamus or, or pituitary. <laughs> exactly. So here's our oh, big disclaimer. The disclaimer. I think I better read it. 
This, right. w- this website podcast is not intended to be a diversion away from the current system of disease management. It is our intention to offer a rational and very effective approach to aiding your body in its ability to rebuild and, and heal. heal. You get to read that paragraph. Ah, please be advised that any suggested nutritional advice or dietary advice is not intended as any primary treatment or therapy for any disease or particular bodily symptom. Nutritional counseling, supplement vitamin recommendations, nutritional advice, and the adjunctive schedule of nutrition is provided solely to upgrade the quality of foods in the patient's diet in order to supply good nutrition, supporting the physiological (laughs) and biomechanical processes of the human body. That's all we do. We are not dentists. We are not not giving you dental advice. My experience... Um, with dentistry as I was a um, well, dental your, assistant for... For your father. For my father. My father's a dentist. My brother's a dentist. I have orthodontists, you know, brother-in-laws, lots of dentistry in our family. I started as a dental assistant when I was 12. My brother started as a dental technician as when he was 11. By the time he got into dental school, he, you know, he knew everything. <laughs> So anyway, and you had a couple of hours of lecture well, in, of dentistry. Well, in uh, classes... Uh, you know, you get the genetics and, and the pediatric development, human development. And I remember, you know, we go through the special senses. You learn about the eyes. You learn about the ears and all this stuff. And, and we learn about the teeth. And I think it was a whole afternoon, two-hour lecture yeah. on where teeth come from developmentally in a developing baby. But that's all you've learned. That's it. So we're, but we have... But... Yes. Here's the big but. The ongoing study of published research articles adds to where we're at. Yeah, and the book and everything else we're going to talk yeah. about. Start with this lovely picture again that we had in our last week's. Root canals, are, is your smile worth your life? Yes, that's an ominous thing to yes. say. Yes, overwhelming scientific, scientific <clears throat> evidence shows that virtually all root canal treated teeth are still infected and slowly and continually leak disease causing pathogens and toxins into the rest of the body as long as they remain in the mouth. Yes, now get a good look at that tooth. Because we're going to show you something else here. <laughs> well, we now. already did last week. Really Yeah, that's sick true. Things. This is just kind of a quick review. Yep. Get, uh, get your little barf bags right. handy. And, and again, to remind you, we are the only mammals that mummify an organ and put it back into the body. That's what my <laughs> dentist says, Dr. Judson Wall. And there's pictures of how a root canal happens. Oh. The far left picture, you can see the cavity oh. starting on the crown at the top. It finally eats the tooth out. The fourth one over... Uh, is where er, the the root canal has been addressed. Uh, the medicine has been put down inside of it with the idea of, of preventing Mummifying. Any, well, it's going to mummify it and, and preventing anything else from happening. Then a crown is put on top of it to seal it off. Okay. And uh, theoretically, good idea. Yeah. Okay. Practically, maybe not We're just whipping through a couple of these slides really quickly. Um, this is the book that we all recommend everybody get. You can go to ToxicTooth.com and buy it right from there so you, you support them. But um, anyway, we all think root canals are just safe, and we don't even question its safety, but we should. Here's some of the um, medical conditions that have been improved by taking out your root canal, and then we have to show you our little cute bunnies. Hello, bunny. Goodbye, bunny. And yes. we described in the first one. In the first one, how they would put a, an infected root canal tooth under the skin of a bunny, and usually within four days, it was dead. It would die if it survives four days. If it did not quickly die from the implanted root canal treatment teeth, they typically develop the same diseases that plagued the humans from whom the teeth had been extracted. This is unbelievable. This is is as controversial now as I would say uh, uh, mercury amalgam extractions were 20 years ago because dentists back then got an awful lot of junk from the ADA. Well, I remember my dad saying, that's kind of ridiculous. They don't hurt you. Yeah, it doesn't hurt to have mercury in your body. Yeah. The most toxic, non-radioactive element on the planet for human physiology 
Well, honey, they shoot it right in your bloodstream. With well, with the flu shot. The flu shot. Oh, yeah. They shoot <laughs> so it. They inject it. They like mercury. Well, maybe we're wrong. Maybe yeah. mercury is one maybe of the essential nutrients of the body. <laughs> yes. So this is my story, and we're going to get more into what happened to me and why. And there's the pictures that were taken before anything was done. And we showed the slide in part one. And you look at the upper and lower um, teeth there on the far right of the picture, and they don't look that bad. No, it's not too bad. And you had no pain? No, I had no pain. I had no pain. And I'll say this again, as I said last time. Um, What happened was uh, I, I needed another root canal. Well, had... you got to back up to October. You got to you got to back up. In fact, that's coming up in your well, history. I got to back up even further than that. I've known for three years now, based on X-rays by my dentist, not the the new one, not, but another dentist, that there was a problem with one of my teeth, and he would show me on the X-ray. Says you got to have a root canal, man. You got to have and, yeah. and like a typical man, if it doesn't hurt, it's not real, <laughs> and. Every year, and it didn't and, hurt. It did not hurt, and it, and there's a reason why. Yeah. And every year that went by, I'd get another X-ray there, and you could see the, the necrosis in the bone spreading. And so, you know, that's I, my Jack. Yeah. Well, yeah. I decide. Okay, it's time to get a root canal, and I had the appointment scheduled. And another dentist who I've taken, who has kind of moved to California, but. I talked to him about it, and he's a biological dentist. He says, are you out of your mind? You know, uh, here, I want you to read this book. I want to talk to you about this. There, there's some things that you need to understand about these root canals. You had the appointment scheduled, everything. I, ha- I had the root canal scheduled. And here, let, let, let's go through your, your history because there's a reason why you did decide to finally do this, even though it didn't hurt. So this is Dr. Jack's history, and... I had my first root canal back in 1978. It's it that in one the, in the front. Yeah, that lovely one we showed last time with the, the root that after he pulled it out and it had the black, black ring, ring around, around it. it. Something he had never seen yeah, before. Yeah, if you hadn't see, then didn't see last podcast. And so as of last that. summer, I've had a total of six root canals. And then... The uh, latest, yeah, it was last summer. Around Halloween, mm-hmm. I started having this awful smell in, in my left nostril. It was like the dead. Yeah. It was so bad. I kept remember. I kept saying, "What? What is that smell? What is? What it's, is that? It's, uh, it's the cat. <laughs> <laughs> it it's smelled. The cat. It smelled like a dead animal. Yeah. Protein, just absolutely rotting. You know, I told you, my dad, my grandpa was a rancher, and when cows died, he just left them. I mean, why, why would he drag them off the mountain? You yeah. know, for a burial or something. Yeah. I mean, he just left them there, and the animals would eat it. And it would lay there for, you know, in the, in the sun for months and months. Yeah. And we used to have this little game where we'd try to run up and touch it. Oh, brother. But you couldn't do it. Because the stink was the so stink bad. The stink was so bad. And yeah. that's what I kept looking around going, what, what is that smell? What is that smell? It was coming from you, baby. Yeah, well, I decide, you know, I started taking some herbs for it. Well, here's what we said. Um, he took a lot of... St- um, supplements, because I was like, whoa, you're rotting from the inside out. So I really just slammed you with golden seal liquid and echinacea premium liquid. Yeah, or you wouldn't let me in the bed. No, liquids were a lot stronger, and that seemed to beat it down. Yeah, it did. It kept it at bay a little bit. Yeah, it did. But and it we wouldn't get rid of it. We've actually recommended that to people before to so it, it would that have had root canal pain, yeah. even after it's a root canal and it shouldn't feel. That has seemed to beat down... So I decided to sit down with Dr. Wall, and they did a cone view. They, it's a, it, it, there are more and more dentists that have this cone view in their offices now. And it's a, it's a CAT scan of the jaw. Yeah. And it, because there's an awful lot of problems with your dentition that will not show in a two-dimensional X-ray, a flat X-ray, you know, where they put the little mm-hmm. things in your mouth, they shoot the picture, it comes up on a computer screen. It it will it will show um, problems with the tooth. It'll show cavities and it'll show other kinds of things. But sometimes, deep enough in the jaw, there's so much bone, you can't see necrosis taking place unless you have a better imaging device, which is what the cone does. And so we sat. I had him go ahead and do it. Mm-hmm. And I sat down, and I read x-rays all day long in my clinic, as you well know. Mm-hmm. 
And I looked at these pictures, and holy smoke, I could not believe what I was seeing. And the, and the ironic thing is, you can't feel it. Well, that's just... You can't feel the pain. If, if it's gone far enough, mm-hmm. you can't feel it. But then once you do the root canal, the nerve is, is removed. There's no nerve there. There's nothing there to tell you something else is wrong unless it spreads far enough into the jaw that's, that osteonecrosis is taking place, even osteomyelitis where it starts to get into the nerve itself. And then, and then you have this pustulance building inside the jawbone. Then you're in some serious trouble. Yeah. Well, you have good bone density. Your nutrition's good. The problem has been that you sealed in with these... With a these, mummy. Yeah, with these root canals. I mean, you yeah, sealed I mummified, in the bacteria. I mummified my teeth, mm-hmm. sealed in the bacteria. That grows anaerobically anaerobic. without, without oxygen. Yeah. And it started to grow and grow and fester and fester. And it was eating away bone where the nerve had been removed. That's so scary. So like I said last week, it's like going into a bank, putting duct tape over all of the camera lenses and turning off the alarm system. And then the bad guys come in to yeah. rob the bank. And Who's going to know? Yeah. And on top of it, you're a guy. Even though you knew you had one route going bad, you just kind of worked and worked and worked. Yeah. Well, like they say, doctors make the worst patients. Yeah. So the left maxillary sinus was completely impacted with infection. And the right was about 85%, 85% yeah. infact- impacted. Yep. So you were full of infection. Yes. Full of this. I mean, I, I'm amazed you didn't, you weren't running a fever that I noticed. You, you, you tend to not really notice when you're in pain. I've noticed you've got a high pain, yeah. pain threshold. But you dragged and were tired and couldn't figure out why. But, you know, you've been this way for so long, probably since that first root canal was yeah, put in. Yeah, th- you don't think twice about you it. You don't, it's not on Because the, den- the dentist says, listen, you've got to have a root canal or have the tooth taken out. Uh, well, I don't want my tooth taken out. Do the root canal. Do the root canal. We just naturally assume that that's the best well, that's option. that's what I was taught, too, that it's better to have your own tooth. So the root, this was... On the was, left side. The bad, the bad one that I have seen for three years. It's so bad. It, the root of that tooth had punctured through his sinus membrane, and Dr. Jack had... Oh, see, I wrote this. He had the a hole the size of his thumb. Yeah. That's what Dr. Wall was saying that it had the whole, the toxins from this root canal were poisoning his bloodstream. And like we said earlier, yeah. it was drip, drip, dripping into your bloodstream. Yeah, and when he pulled that tooth out, he could see into the sinus. Yeah, that's so scary. Holy smoke. <laughs> it's a good thing I was anesthetized. Yeah. I knew they knocked me out completely because when I got, went home and got a shower and saw all the magic marker all over my chest and my... <laughs> <laughs> they took Legs your left kidney. And, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, that's a good thing. They knock, they knock you out for this. Yeah, big time. <clears throat> Especially is, with as much as I had to have done. Yeah, well, this is oral surgery. And you had a cavitation on top of it where yes. a former um, wisdom tooth was, and that had gone bad. So Dr. Wall extracted all his teeth that had root canals in them. Yeah. That I, Six. I, I I signed a piece of paper in advance. I said, "Listen, don't forget the one. Take them all." Yeah, we. You and were just going to me, get the one. He looked at me. He said, "Are you sure? I mean, this is going to take two to three hours to do this." And and I said, "I said teeth. I have read the research. Mm-hmm. I have read the research. I don't have to see myself without teeth. It's other people that have to see it. <laughs> so take them out. Except we have to eat. Yeah, that's a yeah. bit of well, a problem. Well, you know. A good th- diet plan. I like soup. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Well also cleaned out an infected cavitation that had gone into his bones. Um, yeah. Osteonecrosis. In the jaw itself, in yes. the mandible. And we're going to show you. No, no, you, I mean the maxilla. We're going to show you those pictures. That is going to be tough. Yeah. And he put a mesh covering over the hole in his sinus. Yes. So it was really intense what you went through. You poor, poor, yeah. poor thing. Yeah, I yeah. felt so bad for you. Okay. And then the coolest thing is the disinfectant techniques that he did without antibiotics. Yeah, he doesn't use antibiotics. Dr. Wall, and when I was with, we, we were at my family's house with my dad. He's 91, but he's, you know, the dentist and... My sister and we were all there, and you said you had six teeth pulled and a cavitation cleaned out, 
and no antibiotics. And then we also explained the massive sinus infection. And they flipped. They flipped. Because, you know, the old thing, it will go to your heart. They if could you, not believe it. They couldn't believe it. And you haven't had any antibiotics. No. And, and it was two weeks ago the other day that this was done. And Three I, weeks ago. What was three weeks ago? Yeah. Oh, my gosh, it has been three weeks. Yeah. You're right. Three weeks ago and no pain. Yeah. And I, I do some very good dental cleaning every night, a pick, water well, pick. Well, we're going to show all those okay, things. All right, okay. Right, right. So Dr. Judson Wall is a biological dentist, and he does not use antibiotics unless it's a true crisis and they are needed to save a life. Um, Jack, even with all the massive infection in his sinus, was not given antibiotics. The cavity where his root canals were had these treatments, and this is really cool. Every single cavity where, he, I mean, every single hole, I guess, that they, they pulled out of root canal had an ozone treatment done. Yeah, it was ozonated water mm-hmm. that is 8,000 times more bactericidal, bacteria killing, mm-hmm. than even chlorine is. Yeah, we're going to talk about, we and have so a slide all, on it. Yeah, we have the, all just washed out thoroughly with ozonated water. Then... He used this light walker, I don't know how to say that, Herb, Herb, Herbium laser, Herb, herbium laser. And he, to uh, stimulate bleeding. Yeah. So there was a lot of bleeding in each one of these holes. And bleeding fur- cleans it out. Cleans it out, right. To further sterilize it. Yes. Yeah, that's really important. And then this was really cool. This one, and we have video of this. Yeah, this is going to be cool. It's, they call it PRF, platinum-rich fibrin. So Platelet. Or platelet, sorry, I'm reading sideways here. Platelet rich fibrin with stem cells were added. So, so they took a lot of my blood mm-hmm. uh, out of be- your arm before the surgery. Mm-hmm. Took a lot of the blood, put it in a centrifuge, and separated the platelets and the fibrin and my stem cells that were mm-hmm. floating in the blood so that those things could be packed back in each of the holes when they were done. Is that the coolest thing? That, that's just, I know that growth just, factors, it everything blows me in away. there. It, plus growth factors. So you just had this massive ozone treatment in each hole. This um, laser that made it bleed, 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 and then um, the platelet, the PRF, this, you know, thing where they put the stem cells back in. Yep. Super cool. And then I was really kind of iffy on this. I didn't yeah. like this very well, but you did an IV vitamin C therapy to acidify your blood. Yeah, to further kill the bugs. Yeah, because you weren't using antibiotics. Yeah. I do not recommend this. Neither of us recommend this. On an ongoing basis, I've seen a woman die from doing this. It's very scary to put, I mean, people put grams of this ascorbic acid into their bloodstream. Yeah. And, you know, this is a crisis situation, and it did acidify his blood, so no bacteria. <sighs> I mean... I guess that's what it did. And then I, to I cap, don't like those antibiotics. Then to cap everything off, um, following a lymph massage, you had a lymph massage the next to day dra- to yeah, help drain. To drain things out. But uh, following that, I the the immune building, bone building, uh, adrenal supporting, heart supporting, gut supporting protocol that you put me on. Uh, I think is why I feel as good as I do. Well, you know, your the meridian that these teeth were on were involved with the pancreas oh, and the liver. Oh, interesting. And the adrenals. Oh, interesting. Yeah. My pancreas had all kinds of problems. That's why I created with you the forbidden or the uh, long life energy long life energy enzymes. Um, the kidney, because I had a real well, it's liver. Say, the liver, it's liver, oh, because, kidney. Because I have some gallstones. Yeah, that's right. And the that adrenals. Was. Yeah, because, everybody has said your adrenals. Because, yes, because of the absolute lack of energy from about, I don't know, 12 or 1 o'clock in the afternoon on. Yeah. I just dragged through the rest of the well, day. Well, you have been poisoned. And you always, remember how you'd get upset with me because I would just go home, come home and collapse. Yeah, and you always needed a nap. I never understood that. Yeah. So... Um, these were all this 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 was all done. These are the disinfectant techniques that Dr. Wall used. I, I put a little slide in here. There's Dr. Wall again, and this is a video. I'm not going to play it. It's on his website. You can his website's at the bottom, tmjdental.com. You can go there and watch the video for yourself. It's really interesting. But the ozone therapies, a treatment used for disinfecting tissues and helping tissues to regenerate. Yeah, and you can see how they put that little dam around the tooth, and mm-hmm. then they just pump and pump and pump 
ozonated water in it's, there. No, ozone is negatively charged particles that naturally seek to neutralize anything with a positive charge. Bacteria, viruses, and fungus all carry a positive charge. So the negatively, neg- see now I can't say it, negative charged ozone seeks out the positively charged microbes, neutralizing and destroying them, thus disinfecting the area, and the ozone is 8,000 times more bacterial cidal than chlorine. So that's really cool. Then the platelet-rich fibrin helps you to heal better and faster. The PRF is short for platelet-rich fibrin. It's obtained from your blood and contains nothing artificial. After obtaining a blood sample, which they did in your arm, your blood is spun in a centrifuge to separate the growth factors, stem cells, and fibrin present in your blood. And these concentrated materials are then used in appropriate surgical sites to aid in your body's healing process, where they put them down in the cavity where your root canal yeah, and your tooth were. Yeah, and then they sutured works. it close. Mm-hmm. There's also a really cool video. I'm not going to play it here, but you can go to his website and watch that video. And what is a cavitation? Do you want to explain this a little? Well, it's a hole in the bone. And so the idea is that but when, when people go get their wisdom teeth extracted, mm-hmm. uh, those, those holes are closed up. Well, let's just And read the it. idea that the bone would grow in and fill up that hole, but sometimes it doesn't. Well, let's just read this. A cavitation is a hole in the bone, usually where a tooth has been removed, like your wisdom tooth. So you had a massive cavitation problem. Yeah. And the bone has not healed slash filled in properly. It is an area of osteonecrosis, which means dead bone. Often where a tooth is extracted, the surrounding periodontal membrane is usually left behind. Theoretically, after a tooth has been pulled, the body eventually fills in the space in the bone where the tooth once was. But when the membrane is left behind and incomplete healing can take place, a hole or a spongy place remains inside the jawbone. Experts speculate that this incomplete healing occurs because the bone cells on both sides of the extraction site sense the presence of the periodontal membrane and think the tooth is still there. So So ozone gas and ozonated saline are used to disinfect the area of necrotic bone. And as the byproducts of ozone are oxygen and oxygen, (laughs) because ozone is O3, Mm -hmm. Uh, there are no negative side effects from using ozone to disinfect the tissue. Like antibiotics. Yeah. Yes. So. So. Okay, get ready. Get the kids out of the room. Yep, everybody you're, leave. You're going to see three videos. This is rated yuck. And we're going to find out how strong you are. This is me. This is, these are uh, videos of the surgery being done on me. And the more I see these things, the less yuck factor there is, oh. the more I appreciate the fact I did this. Yes, this is amazing. You didn't even know this was inside of you. Nope. Okay, I'm going to fast forward this because it's pretty gross, but I'm going to start it off for a minute. You're going to see Dr. Wall. He's just dug out that yucky, pussy stuff, and he sucks it up right there. Then he digs back in. Oh, I think I'm going to faint. <laughs> So awful. He digs back in, and I think he gets something else here. Let's well, see. Well, he he digs more and more and more now. Is this okay. the one you're gonna? Yeah, this is the one I'm gonna fast forward to. One minute fifty, about. Okay. All right. So I fast forwarded it. He's pretty well cleaned most of the garbage he's out. He's dug and dug, and now he's gonna stick in some. Do I think the um, ozone treatment next? How do you live through this? There it is. There's, There's the oz- ozonated water being yep. injected in the site to water, or the ozonated saline right there. Yeah. So it's saline that's loaded with ozone to, to clean the clean out the wound, and then of course they have the suction there to pick up the fluid. And then he puts some more in. I think yeah. There we go. Oh, I just you know I <laughs> even though it's me. And even though, oh, look, oh, 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 uh, good. it's just good. I'll tell you, I was anesthetized. They knocked me out with propofol. Yeah. And there was a nurse anesthetist there the whole you time. You were Monitoring. No, right. no, no intubation. Now, look, just, there it is. There's the PFR, the, the fibrin and the stem cells. They're stuffing it down in. This is so cool. <laughs> okay, we got over the yuck factor. Yeah, he stuffs okay. it. You know, look this, at that. The, this, is, this is material. Uh, organic material that the body will, will body will absorb this, 
and uh, just stuff down there in the hole once it's been cleaned out, once it's been disinfected. And um, maybe that's why my voice sounds all cottony, because all that stuff is still sticky. <laughs> and then he will come Look in. Look at it. He's putting a lot well, he's in. Got a, well, well a he hole. said that was a massive cavitation yeah. down in there. And then he starts... Then he's going to come in with a suture, I believe. Yeah, and then and the video. And he's going to start. Is, there's we, we, a you suture. Know, we won't go any further. No, we don't he, want you to see that. They're all, they're all it's sutured so shut. so gross. Okay, so um, here's another one. Oh, yeah. This is the, one of the worst ones. This is pulling a big ball of infection out of his hole. Now, what you have to realize, this was in you, Jack. You oh, yeah. could not get this out. No. I mean, we did so many things. All immune therapies, everything else, but... The prop, see, the thing is, is because the blood supply has been cut off in that area and the root, or the nerve is gone, so you can't feel this going I just on. I can't believe you had this kind of infection. So you don't know this is happening. Yeah. So this is underneath the root canal once the tooth was, was removed. And let's just click this and have it go. Okay, I'm going to look away for a minute. Look at that. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> this was what was underneath the tooth in that oh. hole. Oh, see, he like moves it around I mean, for he's the camera. Not, yeah, he's not cutting out like a tenderloin. This is a bad... Muscle. That is muck. That is pus. That is stuff that had to be taken out. Well, I think that was the tooth that had punctured into the um, it could have been, sinus I don't cavity. Know. Uh, we, we were going to talk about you had that root canal scheduled here, but we already talked about it. Yeah. But it's lucky you canceled that root canal. Um, by the way, Medicare doesn't pay anything on this. No. Even though you've been paying into Medicare for 50 years, mm -hmm. you know, do you think Medicare would be, they would be saving us all money by getting this out? Oh, yeah, because of the problems this causes yeah. further down, you know, further down the road. Yeah, and instead Medicare and all of us. We have to pay thousands for disease care down the road yeah. or death. That or something that could have been taken care yeah. of prophylactically earlier. Yeah. Leaving right. the stuff in your body. Yeah. I now, mean, this, this next one, if I'll tell you, if you haven't lost your cookies. No, this, this, this isn't as bad as You this. don't think so? No, but here we go. This is a horribly decayed root canal, and you can just see he gets closer here. Just yeah. there we go. You look, you, now, yeah. keep watching. This is massive yuck factor. And what he does here is he pushes against it. Do you see that infection, that gray? Down inside. Oh, look, goodness. it's like a gray bulb of now, yuck. Yeah, now that's not an amalgam. Because all the amalgams have been removed from my teeth already. I know. That was just the most horrible looking thing. That's all it is. Uh, you have about six more of these when I'm not playing anymore. That's it. We're over with oh, that. Oh, the fun was just getting started. <laughs> I know. But you, what we want to emphasize is you had no pain with all this infection no, no in there. No pain. No, no pain at all. Yeah, I can't believe it. So, now, some of the earlier root canals hurt. Right. And so that's why I got them. Yeah, but not after. But I had to get the root canal because of the pain. Right, but not after the root canal. But after the root canal is done, there's no pain. Yeah, yeah, so the reason you even started down this road is because of that horrible smell coming yeah. out of your nose. Yep. It was so horrible. It got so horrible towards the end that I thought you were dying. I really did. And I think I forced you to make that and a dentist appointment. Yeah, you did. Because I was like, something is terribly wrong. You're rotting from the inside out. And you were. Okay. Very sad. So here's what I did for him. Okay, this is, this is, th this is after I got home, and I'm recovering. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and once I saw what they had done, I said, oh, my gosh, I'm going to hurt tomorrow. What do you have for pain? He said, oh, no, you're not going to hurt tomorrow. I'm not. No, but in about two or three days you are. You're going to hurt. And I'll tell you, I felt like I'd been hit with a sledgehammer in both both sides oh, of my I'm jaw. Sure. Up, oh, my gosh. Well, But I was able to keep it at bay with just some uh, ibuprofen. Yeah, you didn't have any narcotics. For about, about three or four days of ibuprofen, and yeah. the pain was over. He doesn't, he doesn't ever prescribe narcotics. No, he doesn't. Not nope. for this, and nor antibiotics, no. which was great. And... They did offer some standard process, actually, at this dental Yeah, they office, do. But it was And he just... gave me a little herbal wash mm -hmm. to run through, uh, through the nose, through a neti pot. We'll get to that. But it was just a couple things, and I was like, oh, I don't think so. <laughs> so I came home. There's our kitchen. 
<laughs> well, there's and I put together these bags of gut and adrenal and heart and bone and liver packs and immune, which you can't see on this slide. You see his little his little facial diffuser there. Yes. That you put the essential oils in. The green in. thing up early. Yeah, counter. the green thing on the counter there. And then the blender for the raw egg shakes on the left there. And so get ready. Here's what I recommended for his gut support. These are in order of importance because there's quite a few. Lactic acid yeast, which is really critical um, for reconditioning your gut and changing the pH to the proper um, pH. And so you have it, you in your colon, you'll have a moist, soft, supple colon wall so you can exchange fluids. Um, it breaks off old fecal matter and turns it into lactic acid. Um, also, Dr. McBride said lactic acid yeast is one of the best disinfectants for the gut. Yeah. Then, of course, prescriptosix is a probiotic, which, of course, you need after this or any time. Zymex um, eats the food that Candida wants. Um, of course, our Lee enzymes, we don't want to forget those. Those were really important to keeping your gut healthy. Gut Flora Complex does a detox. It's a, it's a medi herb. It's a herbal concoction on the gut. Cod liver oil, of course, very important. And go to Cola Complex, which it's, um, helps the mucus, tissue healing. the mucus membranes yep. in your gut. Then there's a whole list of other things that I actually um, put in off and on. I'm not going to go over them. If you want to know, you can give me a call. But it's basically what's on our website under yeah. the most powerful gut yeah. gaps reconditioning. Yeah. So you can go on our website and look at that. Okay, and then here is our liver support because remember your liver was somewhat compromised. It was on the same meridian of some of the really bad teeth. Yeah. So we did some really good liver support. This is a really strong, I love this herb. It's Medi Herbs Live, Live Co. And then Liviplex, which is standard process and is just a really good support. It also has the protomorphogen for the liver in it. AF Beta Food to help thin those those um, the bile, so you can get rid of those stones that are inside your gallbladder. We saw, um, what was that about a month ago, maybe two months ago? You got that. Um, it was Christmas when I had the uh, study done on the pancreas. Yeah, which came out great, but yep. they did say you had a few gallstones. Stones, yeah. And then Arginex to help with your kidney, as we talked about before. It helps flush the kidney because remember we got to detox all this massive infection out of him. And then beta-call, which is kind of a liver decongestant. Yeah. Okay? And then we also maybe threw in cruciferous complete. And then adrenal support. This He really needed adrenal support. He has been dragging for so long with this toxic load. First thing, of course, that loops your whole HPA axis together is our ageless thyroid. And then blackcurrant seed oil is very critical for the endocrine system. Eleuthero, which is a wonderful herb to give you energy. Yeah, it's a heat shock mm -hmm. uh, protein. Yeah. It's adaptogenic and herb, and it's wonderful for the adrenals. Herbivital has a lot of, it's got those resveratrol in it that, anyway, I could go on forever. It helps you age well, um, so it supports the adrenals. And then adrenal tonic liquid, which is one of, this is kind of a brand new product from Standard Process that tastes wonderful, and it's just yeah. a nice tonic for your adrenals. I also had him suck on Adrenal Complex through the day and some other things, but that was the basic protocol. Then the heart support, this is huge because the, the, they were so scared with your, your blood pressure and you haven't ever been able to really... Oh, we haven't even talked about that. I know. My blood pressure for decades has been sky high. Yeah, since probably that first root canal. Well, when I learned how to fly an airplane in my 20s, uh, I almost did not get my second class medical certificate because my blood pressure was high when I was 26. And then and then we talked about Dr. Levy who got his root canal taken out. Just one, just one root canal. He's the one that wrote, co-wrote the book, Toxic Tooth. And his blood pressure normalized within just a few days. We're going to talk about that with you. So here's your heart support, cardiotrophin, of course, the protomorphogen for the heart, cataplex B that helps the nerves that help the heart beat. Cataplex F pushes the calcium into your tissues and your heart muscle. And of course, calcium, you have to have calcium to regulate your heartbeat. Took out so calcium lactate, wheat germ oil for your heart, evening primrose, which helps clean out the arteries. Hawthorn is a wonderful tonic for the heart. You've probably heard that before. Um, organically bound minerals to calm down yeah, your heart. Yeah, for potassium and mm -hmm. magnesium. 
and then tuna omega-3. You know, you really do a wonderful job on these slides, Mary. Yeah, thank you. You really do. I mean, that, the, your artwork and the way you I lay I try to make out. it really simple yeah. so people can take this and actually use this forbidden information that they can't get anywhere else yeah. and just, bam, use it immediately in their lives. Then I gave you bone. This is what um, Dr. Um, Wall tried, well, he did offer and gave us. Counts of food. You can see it on the picture right there. But I put a few more things together. Ostrophin PMG, because you had just had that bone dug out, and we did not want any autoimmune attack yeah. happening with that. We won't get into that right now. So I threw an Ostrophin PMG. That's the DNA of the bone. So it would divert any antibodies that were attacking your bone for a time. That's really critical. And when you see anything that has a PMG on it, you want to take it on an empty stomach. First thing in the morning and maybe last thing at night. Then we put you on your raw egg shake, and that entails a whole bunch of um, products, which we'll talk about in a minute, and give you the recipe. But that's really important for rebuilding. Um, protofood has the essential amino acids, and, you know, amino acids and proteins are the building block of your body. Ligaplex 1 for the ligaments. Um, bone and ligament support. This is amazing. I could talk for half an hour on Ligaplex 1. It's an incredible product. The, the ingredients inside of that Bar none, the best I've ever seen in any product. Biost. Biost is a great bone. We give this to osteoporotic women. It also has osteo osteophan PMG in it. Calcium food wafers is the product that Dr. Wall recommended, and this is just all the amino acids mm -hmm. already broken down. Again, this is an amazing raw product with raw bone marrow in it. Did you hear me? Raw bone marrow. Mm -hmm. It's just an amazing product. Just chew those up if you don't get anything else. Wheat germ oil again, and linen B6, a good flax oil to help rebuild bones and ligaments. And then here is our raw egg shake recipe. It will be a handout at the end of the podcast because it has quite a few bone building and um, restorative rebuilding right. nutrients in it. And then here's the immune support. This was maybe the biggest thing because you didn't go into antibiotics. Right. So we really slammed this. Yeah, I take this all the time. Yeah, and I was, you know, I was still, I'm still a little bit upset about the vitamin C drip, IV drip. But um, anyway, so I really, I said, no, 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 we're going to do this. We're going to really hit him. So Conjuplex is an incredible product for the immune system. Golden Seal Liquid you were taking before. You kept taking it. <coughs> Echinacea Premium Liquid. Thymex. Um, we do a thymex, a thymus reorganization where you take 20 thymex a day for 45 days. If you're really, really sick, yeah. you do this. Powdered calcium in 636. We've talked a lot about that. Cataplex C, Cataplex F, and calcium. Chlorophyll complex, it's a blood cleanser. It also helps any inflammation. You chewed up chlorophyll pearls. Yes, I did. To help heal those holes. And any inflammation, it brings healing fats to a wound. Yeah, I crushed the uh, chlorophyll complex pearls between my molars and then used my tongue to wash that oil around my extraction sites. You had some molars left? Yeah, there, there's You'd... one over here. <laughs> okay. That's what I cracked those nuts with. Yeah, yeah. And the graphics complex is great for viral infections. Immuplex, again, this is like Ligaplex. It's an amazing product. Tons of stuff in this for the immune system. Zinc liver chelate, which promotes healing. And Calamo, which acidifies the blood, which, you know, I would have rather done that than the vitamin C thing, but you kind of trusted your doctor on yeah. that. But just this time, <laughs> no more. And then he also did this um, face diffuser. You're still doing this. You yes. do this every night, and you put in these three um, essential oils, On Guard or Thieves, peppermint oil, and maleluca oil. Just a few drops, and then the steam comes up there, and I breathe them in the nose, the nostril on the side where the infection was, and it's, it's really helping you. Yeah, you, um, if, if that smell comes back at all as you're still just draining, draining, yep. draining this um, infection from your sinuses. Then you also did the neti pot, the sinus rinse, and you, you would just squirt this up your nose. You can explain this. Well, I, I also put in apple cider, a little bit of a couple of droppers of apple cider vinegar, a couple of droppers of, uh, oh, silver. Uh, of silver, colloidal mm -hmm. silver, and... Um, an herbal concoction that Dr. Wall gave me. Yeah. So there's a dropper in each. So in each, and I would do two of them at a time. So two of those little bottles there, 
uh, with two with a packet of that saline because you can't have regular water go up your nose. Remember in the swimming pool? Yeah. When you were a kid and you get water up your nose, how bad that would hurt. You have to have an, what's called an isotonic solution. Perfectly So balanced. there's a little packet of, of, of salt. That's on the right there, yeah. the little pre-mix packets. Right. You pour that in there so that you have an isotonic solution so it will go up your nose without, all you, you know, and you get used to it. It goes up the nose and down the other side. And you close your throat down. That's when you hear me go. Mm, I know mm, mm. you make this. That's salt. closing. The I thought salt. you're meditating. No, no. That's <laughs> oh. Yeah, you're this screaming. Is, mm, <laughs> it's a, you know a different tone, and so um, that closes down the soft palate. So the solution goes in one side of the nose and out the other side down the sink. I tried it in bed, with, but it was too guy. messy. I tried it, in the, but I feel good, Mary. Well, I know that's our next slide. This is. This is just incredible. These are the benefits of having his root canals removed, teeth. I should say his root yeah. canal teeth removed. My blood pressure. This was so fantastic. Is I could not believe this it. This was like two days later? Two days later I, or, or, or maybe, maybe, it was, maybe three because uh, I was hesitant to do it because I was afraid that my blood pressure wasn't going to come down. I, You know, the, uh, this, this is so I amazing. I saw the lowest blood pressure. I'm not going to tell you how what it was when it was high because that's too embarrassing. <laughs> but three days after these the teeth were extracted, it was 138 over 88. I about burst into tears when I saw that. Honey, but see, this 138 hasn't... 138 over 88. This hasn't been your fault. This has been these root canals yeah. that have been poisoning your body. Yeah. I thought it was just bad thoughts. Yeah, just sinning. Yeah, yeah, just sin. Well, but no, you would be much worse off though. If no, it was sinning. I have never ever <laughs> seen one thirty-eight over eighty-eight. That was so exciting. Just, I just I had to sit down and just kind of thank myself. Anyway, for doing this and finding this, and then and, the energy, and then everybody has found it now because of this podcast. So you need to share these podcasts with the whole world. My energy is back. Yeah, this has been amazing. Yeah. You you were running up the stairs a minute ago. Yeah. You said I'm 66. I was running up the stairs. Here we we are recording this at almost midnight. It's 11:30. Yeah. And I'm still going. Yeah. This is crazy. I usually crash around 7:30 8 o'clock. I'm still going. Yeah, I can't even get a coherent sentence out of you. And then this next one here, my foggy thinking that I I I I always wake up early and I'm good till about noon 1 o'clock and then all of a sudden I noticed that. Mm, You're thinking. My thinking. I have to think. I have to really concentrate on what's going on around me. You know, to, it's not that. Where am I? What's going on? Who are these people? And it's not that. I just notice I'm not as sharp in the afternoon as I am in the morning. But now. Yeah, you've really. Now, that. I mean, it goes right on through the day, and I sit there and I carry on conversations in the afternoon. After lunch, and I and I'm talking to people, and I'm thinking, "Wow, that's cool." So within 24 hours of the extraction, you said you felt the next 20 years morning, younger. The next morning, when yeah. I got up before the pain hit, mm -hmm. the next morning when I got up, I wa I remember walking around the bedroom before I went in to take a shower, thinking, "Is this the body I went to sleep in last night?" That because is so cool. I feel so young. Yeah, that is so cool. And watch out. Your younger libido is making yeah. a return appearance. Now get ready. Watch this. Bam. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's my baby picture. Yeah, that was about yeah, that's me. six years ago. Yeah. I think we took that. Yeah, was it was it that long ago? I think so. Five or six years yeah, ago. Yeah, that's my Hemingway shot. Yeah, you're out I'm on our Trying deck. to look like Hemingway. It's so nice. You know, islands in the sky. So that's cool the that the libido is coming up too. Yeah. So that's that's wonderful. I feel like I feel like I'm waking up out of a long, deep sleep. Wow. That's incredible. That okay. Is, that's been there for decades. I'm gonna quickly read through some of these um, stories because I this was Jack's story that we told mostly, but I want to read a few of these because these were just incredible. The, this person had untreatable headaches since an early age. She said she had a bunch of root canals done on various teeth on the upper left side of her mouth. Um, I started developing headaches that began on the left temple and radiated to the back of my head beyond my ears and my eyes. The pain would come and go, and I dealt with it for as long as I could. Now, I'm reading. I'm not reading the slide on the screen. I'm reading before I because I couldn't fit it all on the screen. 
So she said, I've been seeing my dentist regularly for checkups and cleanings. And then I got another root canal and the upper left side. Um, and then I had, during the series of root canal visits, the pain intensified. I was taking four Advil every four hours to alleviate the my pain. Goodness. She said, I could have used something stronger, but I could not take narcotics and continue to work as a nurse. So she was a nurse. Mm. The dentist tried, did try to make an accurate diagnosis of my pain, but stated that he felt that it was unrelated to my teeth. I proceeded to have an MRI, a visit with an ear, nose, and throat doctor, as well as full exam with a neurologist. All findings were negative, and the headaches remained a mystery. I returned to my dentist, and not only um, being able to make a definitive diagnosis, he suggested we pull the truth that was the last root canal treated. It took four weeks to heal because I developed a dry socket. Ugh. I was now on narcotics. <laughs> you don't want a dry socket. A Vicodin, to be exact, and still had no relief from headaches. The pain was the worst I had ever experienced. It felt like I had a hole in my gum that was open to the nerves in my face. Ultimately, the gum healed, but the headaches persisted. Again, my dentist recommended a pain clinic to help me since he could find nothing dentally wrong. Understanding now that I was at a dead end, I was speaking to my mother-in-law and told me about Dr. Kulax. I guess that's how you say it. That's the guy that wrote the book, The Toxic Tooth. She explained that he practiced, practiced integrative dentistry. When I asked her to explain, she said, he takes your whole body into consideration when you have a problem, not just your teeth. So I had nothing to lose. I called Dr. Kulax and I explained my symptoms to him over the phone right then and there. He says, it sounds like you have some type of circulation problem to the bone and possible residual infection or dead bone where the extractions were performed. Come and see me right away. I saw Dr. Kulax the next day. Within minutes, he had made a definitive diagnosis. So I'm reading up here on the slide now. Your pain is from the damage that was caused by the use of Novocaine and vasoconstrictors, vasoconstrictors during all of the root canals that you have had. In addition, all root, canals, all root canals you had were infected. I would like to remove the affected teeth and infected dead bone at the extraction sites, and your pain will likely be resolved. I had the surgery a day or two later, and my headaches were finally gone. Subsequently, I had a partial bridge placed, and I've never had the same headache return. Dr. Kulak, through his knowledge and wisdom, truly saved me from a life of pain and potential death from the infection that could have spread to my bloodstream. In addition, wow. as a health care provider, he has proven that you must consider the whole body, not just the teeth. Most dentists don't get involved in the medical history of their patients, and most physicians don't get involved with the dental history of their patients. Isn't that something? Yeah. See? That's what a biological That's dentist the, does. But a biological dentist will do that. Yeah. Because when I had to fill out my forms before Dr. Wall had seen me, a whole, the whole medical, it wasn't and, and, dental and, history, and what, it was the whole medical and history. And what are you doing now when you're taking x-rays of the head? You're looking at those root canals. Oh, yeah. When people come in, yeah, you're people, looking at the bottom going, oh. They say, how's my neck? And I said, neck, heck. <laughs> Look at your teeth. Look at the bottom of your root canals. Yeah. Oh. So she says, I'm so grateful to him. They took the time to listen to me, analyze my symptoms, and make the right decision. She said, I can now go on with a normal life. It's, it, he is truly an incredible dentist and human being. And he got his license taken away. Yeah. That this. is the saddest thing For ever. This, he got his just like Dr. Taken. Roy Lee, just yeah. so. Uh. Okay, this lady's facial neuralgia. Um, today marks the beginning of a new lease on life for me. I had a wonderful day thinking about how lucky I am to finally get a second chance to enjoy life. This past January, I decided to bridge my lower left molars, and that was the sorriest day of my life. Each and every aspect of my life was compromised from that point on. I endured the most excruciating pain I've ever experienced in my entire life, which includes a 20-hour labor and delivery. This is bad. My mouth was numbed repeatedly during endodontic procedures, many times without success. I experienced temporary face paralysis and repeated infections, as well as many, many extremely unpleasant procedures, all without relieving any of my pain. The only way I was able to make it through each day was with the help of my very supportive friends and family. There were many nights I did not want to face another day and began to understand why people end their lives. Short of pulling two teeth out of my mouth, I was referred to a neurologist, see, you're always crazy, who diagnosed me with facial neuralgia and prescribed Neurotin. 
That's a really strong pain reliever, right? Yes. The pain was somewhat relieved, but I was unable to function because of the extreme fatigue and for forgetfulness from the neurotin. The pain did eventually return anyway and intensified. As a last resort, I chose an alternative route. I was upset to hear that the teeth I had been holding onto in vain would have to be removed and the bone tissue cleaned out properly. At that point, I was way beyond the end of my rope, so I cons consented to the surgery. And then she said, I wasn't the slightest bit nervous going into the procedure. The procedure itself was painless because she's out and without incident. You and your anesthesiologist were a pleasure to deal with, and I will be in an advocate in your crusade to end educate those who suffer needlessly. So that was years ago from this book when he wrote the book. So, you know, we got to keep telling people about this. Here's another one, congestive heart failure. LM of Armok, New York, had a heart attack at age 40, a second heart attack nine years later that was treated with coronary bypass surgery. When he came to my office at age 62, he was in congestive heart failure and awaiting a heart transplant. He presented with several periodontal diseases as well as chronic endodontic infections. After the extraction of his root canal treated teeth and the effective treatment of his periodontal disease, his cardiac status improved enough that he was no longer considered a transplant candidate. Wow. That's wonderful. Here's headaches and sinus congestion. This person presented with a constant headache for one year. Duration as well as chronic sinus congestion, congestion is left sinus, just like you. Both the dentist and the ear, nose, and throat specialist found no pathology or cause for his condition. After removing tooth number 14, which was treated with a root canal, both his headaches and his sinus congestion were immediately alleviated. Here's another one, hearing loss and sinus infection. Even though the sad journey started over 10 years ago when I had my first root canal, I am thankful that the worst is over. I am now root canal free. I was suffering from severe stomach problems that started months after my first root canal. I was even hospitalized for pancreatitis. The seven-day hospital stay cost over $25,000, and none of the specialists could find out what was causing the symptoms. They gave me medicine to relieve the symptoms, but never could get to the root of the cause. Huh, no pun intended. Dr. Robert Kulax was brave and skilled enough to venture into my sinus cavity and cleaned out all the infection. Right now, I feel better than I have in, in years. One week after surgery, a miracle. The sinus infection is gone, no trace of it, and I feel wonderful. I'm finally symptom-free with no root canals in my mouth. Still partially deaf and left in the left ear, I believe this will always serve as a reminder to me of just how dangerous to one's health root canals can be. So I know we've gone long on this. So those were wonderful um, testimonials. And um, in the book, there's several more in the book. Yeah, there's a. There, I got these right out of the book. Yeah. So, um, we also have another book I forgot to put in that we ordered. The root canal cover up. Yeah, that's a really scary one. I forgot to put. So that once in. again, in recapping here, yep. Here's soup. here's what's happened. Probably the most dramatic thing is the blood pressure dropping down to normal. I can't believe it. Yeah. In I'm like, still. I'm still having a hard time believing what I see on that and you were thermometer. You were still on meds and healing and inflamed. Oh, yeah. You, mean, you, know, you think your, your blood pressure would be a little bit high just for that. Energy's but. back. Foggy thinking's gone. I feel much, much younger. Mm -hmm. And my libido. Yeah. I, I didn't think there was that big of a problem with it, but That's you are looking pretty good. <laughs> it's midnight, honey. No. Was, no? <laughs> no. No. No headache? No, no. no I don't You're have looking headache. pretty good. And I'm getting my root canal taken out in... I have a little one. over a week. Maybe a couple, maybe a couple weeks Yeah, yet. I had an a amalgam that my dad had put in, and my tooth cracked. And infection, I mean, bacteria got down there, and it got infected. I had a, I had a fever for about a month. So I went to the dentist. They said, oh, you need a root canal. I'm like, okay. I was sad. I thought I'd never have to have a root canal. But they did a root canal, and it has never not hurt. Three since, years. Since I don't know. Oh, I think it's been longer. I think it years. has. I've got to go back and yeah. check my records, but it's been a long time, and it's never not hurt. This root, this tooth, I can't chew on it real well, and it shouldn't hurt because it's a dead tooth. Yeah. So what's hurting? Infection. Probably an infection yeah. down there. So I'm really excited to get this out. You know, maybe I'll um, turn, uh, my, you know, all those things will go on me too. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Oh, I forgot about that. <clears throat> 
These statements made in this webinar about specific products have not been evaluated by the United States Food and Drug Administration and are not intended to diagnose, cure, treat, or prevent disease. All information provided or any information contained on or in any product label or packaging or this webinar is for informational purposes only and is not intended as a substitute for advice from your physician or other healthcare professionals. And we want to mention again, we are not, not dentists. dentists. And this is not dental advice. This is simply my experience through how I felt before having toxic root canal uh, teeth removed and how I feel now. And I'm going to be talking funny for the next three or four months. Yeah, maybe, as you get used to it. And we'll give you a little sneak peek. I I um, I um gave this book to Jack for Valentine's Day, and he can't put it no, down. No, it's incredible. So you might want to get it and read it, and we may do a podcast on that in the future. Okay, please leave comments or questions at the end of the podcast. We would really appreciate some comments. Or if you've got something you'd like us to address, let us yeah, know. Yeah, or even if you appreciate these, come on, give us a little sugar. We need a little, we need a little encouragement here. Please um, remember you can always call, text, or email us with questions, and we will help you. Okay. I'll do it. That's it. We'll and see you we next will week. see you next week. Thank you for listening to the Forbidden Doctor Podcast. If you are curious about long life energy enzymes or ageless thyroid, you can purchase them without a membership from our website at ForbiddenDoctor.com or get our enzyme formula from Amazon.com by searching the full term long life energy enzymes. Don't forget to take our obligation free symptom survey to get a free personalized supplement protocol recommended for you by Dr. Jack, Mary, or one of our qualified nutritionists. Take the survey, Get a call from our nutritionist to create a protocol and a patient login, then use that login to see your own personal protocol along with any favorites you've saved from our symptom library. Remember, our website and our clinic are here for you always.